gonna walk you through each and every single one of these problems. So we're doing product of two fractions and a product of three fractions. Notice these are really big numbers, so I'm gonna walk you through the whole process to show you that it's not that bad. And what's good to have in handy is multiplication chart as well as the list of prime numbers. All right, here's the first one, 35 twentieths times 18 tenths. What I like to start off with first is the prime factorization of each of these numbers in order to organize the work. Because remember, your goal when you multiply the fractions in the end is to make sure you end up with the simplified answer. So to do that, you have to eliminate the common factors. And what I recommend is to do the prime factorization of each of these numbers while they're smaller versus a lot of times students will want to multiply these together first and these together. You end up with a big number that you have to simplify, so to, and which makes it more complicated. So I recommend doing it ahead of time. In other words, if I were to multiply these two numbers up top, I would get 630. And if I multiply these in the bottom, I get 200. So my numbers get bigger and then I have to simplify this. So depending on the numbers that you get, sometimes it might be easy, sometimes it, it might be more difficult. In this case, it doesn't look too bad because I know I can divide each of these by 10. And if I divide each of these by 10, that's gonna give me 63 over 20. And then I still have to do the prime factorization of these two numbers to figure out what are the common factors. So if you're good at your multiplication facts, sometimes it's easy to see what you can divide them each by. And if you don't you know your multiplication facts, then you still gotta do the prime factorization to expose the common factors. And all prime factorization is, is that you're breaking down a number into factors that are prime numbers. So for example, 63 is seven times nine, 20 is four times five. And going back to that list that I was recommending, do you have handy? The prime numbers are essentially just a number that the factors are only one in itself. So for example, like three is prime because the only numbers that are whole numbers you can multiply together to get three are one and three. Same thing for five, the only two numbers you could think of will be one times five. But nine is not prime because I can actually write that as three times three. So that's what makes it not prime. And then four is not prime because you could actually write that as two times two. Five is prime because again, these are the only numbers you can multiply together to get five will be one and five. And again, we're talking about whole numbers. And then at this point, you can see that they don't have any common factors. So that means that my final answer would actually be 63 over 20. So now let me go ahead and simplify this the other way I recommend, which would be due to prime factorization of each of these numbers. So 35 would be 5 times 7. 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5. And 18 is 2 times 9. 10 would be 2 times 5. Again, go back to that prime number list. These are all prime except for 9 and 4. So... This will be 5 times 7. 4 is going to be 2 times 2. Bring down that 5. And then the 9 will be 3 times 3. And this will be the same, 2 times 5. And then, at this point, you could go ahead and start looking for common factors between the numerator and your denominator. But one thing I'd like to do is to organize my work, make it a little bit simpler to cancel out the common factors, is to reorganize this into one fraction, because when you multiply fractions, you're always going to multiply all the numbers in the numerator together, and in the denominator, you're going to multiply all those numbers together. So I'm just going to reorganize it into one fraction over here. And as you can see here is, I had 2, 3, 3, 5, 7. I just wrote it in least the greatest order, because to me, it makes it easier to organize it this way. And the same thing on the denominator, I had 2, 2, 2, 5, 5. So I reorganized it at least the greatest. You don't have to, but I notice when I do this that I make less mistakes because whenever you have things on different sides, you know, you, you might end up missing on, on what are the common factors. So by stacking them like this, you can see quickly which ones are the common factors because, again, they're both organized least the greatest. So now I go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to eliminate this uh, com common factors. And remember, the reason why we can eliminate this is because 2 divided by 2 is really just 1. So this is really just the answer of 1 over 1. So that's what we say when we eliminate the common factors is because it just reduces to 1. So now, another pair of common factors are 5 and 5. And you can see there's nothing else in common. So what I do next is just multiply this all together and I'm done with, and I'll get my final answer. So 3 times 3 is 9. And then 9 times 7, 63. And then 2 times 2 is 4. And then 4 times 5 is 20. So the same answer that I got before, just a different way to do it. So here's another example. Like I said, if let's say you multiply these two all across in the first step, I would, I'm going to get 600 over 864, which you can see those are really big numbers. And it's not going to be too obvious what their greatest common factor is or what the common factors are in, in order to simplify it. So what I recommend, like I said before, is to go through this process here 
to write out the common factors, the prime factorization, so you could find out what the common factors are and you could quickly eliminate them. In this problem, I can see that 24 is the same thing as 8 times 3, and this one is 9 times 3. This one will be 9 times 5, and 32 is 8 times 4. So whatever is not a prime number, I'm just going to break it down further. So this is prime, this is prime, and 5 is prime. So 8, I could rewrite it as the product of 2 times 2 times 2. And then I still have that 3, so I'll bring the 3 down. And then 9 is the same as 3 times 3. And this will be 3 here. 9 again is 3 times 3. Bring down my times 5. 8 is just 2 times 2 times 2. And then 4 again is 2 times 2. So that's the prime factorization. Notice there's only prime numbers that are shown here. And when you multiply all these numbers together, you're going to get back 24. If I multiply these three threes together, I get back 27. So that's what prime factorization is. It's just these numbers are all prime numbers. And when you multiply all the prime numbers together, you get back the original number. And as a side note, if you're not sure how I went from 8 to 2 times 2 times 2, here's just a quick note. You just find two numbers that multiply to give you 8, which is 2 times 4. Circle the prime number, which is 2 in this case. When this is not prime, you break it down further. That just becomes 2 times 2. And you can see here, 8 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2. So that's prime factorization. Only prime numbers left. And if you go back to the previous problem, all I really did was take the 20, that's 4 times 5, and the 4, I broke it to 2 times 2. So this is a, a way you can do it. Or you could just do the work on the side like I did here, and then plug it back in over here, substitute it. All right, so now I'm going to take all these. I'm going to reorganize it in the next step, so from least to greatest. And I'm, these are all multiplied together on the top, and these are all multiplied together on the bottom. So now you can see here, it's reorganized, least to greatest. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2s. And three threes on the bottom and on top i have one two three twos two one two three threes and a five so double check that you did um copy it correctly because common mistake i see is that you might forget to put a number here or another common mistake i see is students write the top numbers on the bottom and the bottom numbers on the top so make sure they go in the correct spots and now the last step which is the, the best step is to just start eliminating the common factors so this will be eliminated here. Here's another pair of common factors, another pair of common factors. And again, this is what we mean by simplifying. You're just eliminating common factors. That's the definition of simplifying a fraction. Eliminate the common factors between the numerator and denominator. So now I can see here, I have a three here and a three here, a three and a three, and another pair of threes. So what's left is my final answer. I only have a five left up top. So again, check very carefully. So organization is going to be important because if Sometimes I see students miss, you might miss a number that's in there. So that's why you have to mark which ones you're, you're eliminating and take your time doing that. But we have a 5 here, and I have two numbers left, 2 times 2 on the bottom, which is 4. And that will be my final answer, 5 fourths. All right, here's the next example. So one thing I'm going to show you in this one is that sometimes you might notice that there is a common factor. You could simplify each, each fraction. In other words, if you see the 20 and the 50, if both numbers end in a 0, we'll know automatically that they're both divisible by 10. So if I were to take 20, if I were to divide this number by 10, that actually gives me 2. And if I were to divide this number by 10, that actually gives me 5. So this is actually simplified to 2 fifths here. These are both primes, so I know that I cannot simplify that any further. And then here's another division rule. If a number, if both your numbers end in a 0 or a 5, automatically I know that you're going to be able to divide them each by 5. So if you could think of a common number you could divide both of these by, and again, it has to be the same number, you can go ahead and do that and save some time. So when you divide this out, that's going to give me 15 from my numerator. And when you divide this out, that's going to give me 10 from my denominator. So and the goal for that is to just make the number smaller. So by making a number smaller, it makes your job easier. And now that the numbers are smaller, I can see here, okay, prime factorization for 15 will just be 3 times 5. This one here will be 2 times 5. And over here, that's already simplified to 2 fifths. Then my next step is just to put it all in one step. I'm going to do least to greatest, so 2, 3, and 5. 2, 3, and 5 multiplied together, and 2, 5, 5 in my denominator. And I can see quickly the common factors between the numerator and denominator will be a pair of 2s and a pair of 5s, which leaves my answer to be 3 over 5. All right, here's my next example. Looking at these 2 and 33, I can see that these are actually, this is prime, um, these are not prime, but I know that if both numbers end in 0, I know for a fact I could divide them each by 10. So that's just a little division rule there. So if I divide this out, I'm going to get 10 here. And 30 divided by 10 is 3 for that one. And then this, I'm just going to keep the same. And then do the prime factorization in the next step. 
So 10, I could do it as 2 times 5. This will stay to become 3. This is still 2. And 33 is 3 times 11. As a side note, if you don't know your, your multiplication facts, all you got to do is use a table. I'm using a 30 by 30 here. You look for your numbers, so look for 33. You scan each row for 33, and then once you find it, which is here, you'll know which what your factors will be. In this case, 33 is 11 times 3. And that's how you can figure out your factors if you're not sure how to do them because you, you know, you need, you're need you not confident with your multiplication facts. So just use a multiplication chart. And then I can see, again, if you're not sure what the prime numbers are, just have that NIST handy. You'll be able to see which numbers are prime. Like you can see 3 is prime, 11 is prime. And that's how I know that I cannot break these down any further. So next, I just reorganize them, the numerators all together, denominators multiplied all together, and least the greatest order. And you can see here, there are no common factors between my numerator and my denominator. So now I, I multiply this together. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 5 is going to give me 20. 3 times 3 is 9. And 9 times 11 is 99, which gives me my final answer, 20 over 99. So remember, the fact that we went through the process of eliminating the common factors, you know for a fact that this is in simplified form. All right, here are, is my next example. Notice that we're multiplying three factors together. Numbers are much, much bigger. But don't panic because you can see here that it's going to be the same exact process. It's just you got to do the prime factorization for not only two factions, but for three. And these are uh, problems, especially if you're trying to multiply everything together, you're going to get a number that's really big, 404,000. 250 for your numerator and when you multiply all these you're gonna get 1,524,600 so trying to simplify this is gonna be too complicated and as I mentioned before if you were to look at some of the numbers and notice that there is some common factors you could divide by right off the bat then I would do that ahead of time just to try to save some time but again if you can't see it then just do the, the process I showed you and you always get the right answer so, for example, looking at these two numbers, they both end in 0, so I know I could divide each of these by 10. So, if I divide this by 10 and divide this by 10, I'm going to get a new problem, 77 over 20 times 15 over 63 times 35 over 121. And then now I just go in, ahead and start doing a prime factorization of these numbers. So, for 77, I know that's just 7 times 11. 20 is going to be 4 times 5. This one is 3 times 5. This is 9 times 7. 9 times 7. And then this one will be 5 times 7. And this is 11 times 11. So again, if you don't know these, just use your multiplication chart to find these numbers. And I can see here that most of them are prime, except for some of them, like the 4 is not prime. And 9 is not prime. So I'm just going to rewrite those. So this will be 7 times 11. This will be 2 times 2 times 5 for that one. This stays the same. Those are both prime. 7 is prime. This is not. That becomes 3 times 3. Bring down my 7. And then these are all prime, so that's going to stay the same. And now for my next step, I'm just going to reorganize this, least to greatest, all in one fraction. These are all multiplied together, and these are all multiplied together. So I reorganize everything, least to greatest, all these multiply together here, all these multiply together on the bottom. And now I'm just going to go ahead and start eliminating the common factors. So I have a pair of threes here. I've got a pair of fives here. There's no more fives. Seven, I have another seven. There's no more sevens here. And I have one eleven as a pair that I can eliminate. So whatever terms are remaining, whatever factors are left, you're going to multiply them together to get your, your final answer. So I, you can see here I have a five and a seven. So if I multiply that, I get 35. And on the denominator, the bottom, I got two, two, three, eleven. Two times two is four. Four times three is 12 and 12 times 11 is 132 so that is my final answer and just as a little side note you can see here it's a lot of work so organization is going to be very important so make sure you practice organizing really well because as you move up in math right you're going to start working with equations things like that where organization is going to be really important so even though it might not seem that important for you to, for you now make sure you organize your work start working on that and then here's my last example again i'm not going to multiply all these because the numbers are going to be too big and I don't really see any patterns as to what I could divide by. So I'm just going to do this prime factorization trees for each of these big numbers. So starting with 174, that's the same as 29 times 6. 29 is prime, 6 is not, so I'm going to get 2 times 3. And I'm going to go ahead and do this for each of these numbers here. I'm going to list them all on the side so that it keeps my work organized. So I did the prime factorization for all my numbers, as you can see here. And they weren't as bad as they looked. A lot of them have to be just mostly prime numbers that are multiplied together. 
Same thing for the 119 and the 87. So again, those are all the prime factorizations for each of these problems here. So I ended up replacing all this with the prime factorization. I'm gonna organize it on the same fraction. So one single fraction. So you can see here from least to greatest, again, you don't have to, but I do that just to keep it organized. So like you see, it's easier to eliminate common factors. So I'm gonna start doing that. A pair of 17s, a pair of 23s, and a pair of 29s. So what I do have left is gonna be seven times 11, which is 77. And then on the denominator, the bottom, I only have a 13 left. So 77 over 13 is my final answer.